A child of mass 34 kilograms slides down a fairground slide of length 20 meters and height 6 meters. She comes to a gradual stop at the bottom. Describe the energy transfers and calculate the average friction force that acts on the child. And we are given that gravitational field strength is G, G equals 10 newtons for every kilogram. Now, to answer this question, we're going to use the ideas of work done by a force as it transfers energy from one form to another. So first of all, let's describe the energy transfers happening in this process. Now, the child is, starts off at the top of the slide. And so what type of energy does the child have there? Well, lifted up through a height. So that must be gravitational potential energy. So I'm just going to put G, P, E there. Gravitational potential energy. Now, when the child starts to slide, where does that gravitational potential energy go? Well, it starts to go into movement energy, into kinetic. I'll just put Ke for kinetic energy. And what actually does that transfer of energy? Well, it's gravity. Gravity does work. Gravity does work. I know gravity works, but it's the way that we say it. Gravity is doing work. Gravity does work. It transfers energy from one form to another, from gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy. But that's not the whole story, because the kinetic energy then gets transferred into thermal energy. Into thermal energy. Remember that uh, the child is sliding all the way down this slide and comes to a gradual stop. So that means she's lost all of her kinetic energy. And that has gone to thermal energy. Maybe a little bit of sound energy as well. Now what does that energy transfer? Well, it's friction. It's friction. And friction will be between the child and the slide acting in the opposite direction to the child's movement. And there's also a bit of air resistance friction as well, which does the same job, converts the kinetic energy to thermal energy, maybe a little bit of sound, and slows the child down. Those are the energy transfers. And we can just add here, friction does work as well. It transfers energy. OK, so now we've got to calculate the average frictional force on that child. So where should we start? Well, let's start at the beginning of the story with gravitational potential energy. Let's do a data list. What do we know here? Well, the relevant information for gravitational potential energy is the mass being 34 kilograms. The vertical height of the slide is 6 meters. Because when you lift up a, a weight through a height, that's when you get gravitational potential energy. It's got to be the vertical height. We know that the gravitational field strength on Earth is 10 newtons for every kilogram. And we're trying to find the gravitational potential energy in joules. So the equation that we'd use here would be that EP equals M times G times H. Let's put the numbers in. So we've got 34 kilograms multiplied by 10 multiplied by 6 meters. We don't need to put the units in when you put the numbers in because we've already made sure they're in the correct units in the list. And we get the answer of 2,040 joules. So that is the potential energy, the gravitational potential energy of the child at the top. Now, Let's just do a quick uh, sketch of what's going on here. So here's the, uh, here's the child sliding down. Very bad drawing, sorry. Woohoo! Um, OK, so there is a frictional force acting in the opposite direction to the child's motion. So the child may 
be moving through a distance of d from the start to the end. And friction is always pointing in the opposite direction to the motion. So that means it's always doing work. It's always transferring energy. So let's make a little note there. It's quite important. Friction, force is always acting parallel to the motion and distance traveled. Therefore, that's the short shorthand for therefore, it does work, transfers energy. Okay, so we've now got that much gravitational potential energy and we're going to assume that all of that gravitational potential energy gets converted into kinetic energy and then friction does work to transfer it into thermal energy. Thermal energy will be of the uh, slide, it will heat the slide up slightly and it will also heat up the, the air as the child passes through the air because there will be some air resistance. So both those effects come under this same energy transfer. Okay, so let's now move to the, um, the friction that does work. Um, what do we know about doing work? Well, let's make a data list of um, the remaining data that we have. We know that the distance the child slides is 20 meters. We know the force, the average force, well, that's what we're trying to find. Average frictional force on the child. We do know that the work done, which is the energy transferred, in this process, from kinetic energy to thermal energy, and we're assuming that there is a 100% conversion here, which is probably pretty close to the, the truth, we know that the energy transferred is 2,040 joules. So from this data, we can then use the equation W work done equals force times distance. Let's put the numbers in. So 2,040 is equal to the force times by 20. Let's uh, divide both sides by 20. Divide by 20, divide by 20, and we will get 102 is equal to F. And so therefore, the frictional force, the average friction force is 102 newtons. That friction force will both be the friction, the contact friction between the child and the slide, and also a little bit of air resistance force as well will be part of that. We have assumed that all of the kinetic energy has been transferred into thermal energy for this calculation. But I hope that makes sense. It's quite a complicated calculation, but I hope you can see that it's actually simplified once we have written out the energy transfers and start at the beginning with the gravitational potential energy calculation and then work it through using work done principle, W equals F times D, and then it's a simple calculation to work out the average force.